Okay, in this video, I've got two different chainsaw idling issues and solutions and a little bit of theory to help with that deeper understanding. Welcome to the Repair Specialist channel. I'm Craig, the owner and creator. And having been in the trade for around 30 years, I now make videos relating to the diagnosis and repair of small engines and machinery and how things work and why. And in layman's terms, using clear visual explanations to help you gain a deeper understanding and a firmer knowledge base. Why? Because knowledge is power. So let's get to it. And supporting this video is a free download leaflet of how to tune your chainsaw. There's a link in the description below that will take you onto my website where you can download this, as I've said, completely free. The best of it is, is it's printable and you can take it into your workspace with you and tune your chainsaw at your leisure. All right, so here's the first issue. We've got an unfavorable situation here where the chainsaw makes that bog sound before it revs up. But this time, it's also having trouble idling. If it wasn't for the fact that I keep pulsating on the throttle trigger, then the engine would definitely die. So what could possibly be causing this inside the carburettor? Well, the flag for me here is the chainsaw's trouble idling in combination with that bog sound each time we have to press the throttle trigger to keep the engine going. So the problem we're dealing with is very much the idling settings on the carburettor. And of course, a large part of that is down to the L screw or the low screw, which of course means the settings for low revs. And whilst there are other reasons why a chainsaw might run like this, such as blockages in certain areas of the carburettor, it should be noted that it's well worth trying to adjust the L screw before any major work is taken out on the carburettor. So we screw the L screw anti-clockwise until the engine starts to sound better. And now for the second issue. Okay, so in this example, the engine is idling a little lumpy and there's a bit more than usual smoke emitting from the exhaust, although it's quite difficult to see on camera. And so what's likely happening here then is that there's too much fuel coming out into the induction tube of the carburettor because the L screw is screwed out too far, allowing too much fuel down and the engine is struggling to efficiently combust this amount of fuel. So the obvious remedy for this is to screw the L screw inwards clockwise to restrict some of that fuel, thus making it a more suitable amount for the engine to combust. Okay, so those last few minutes were problem and solution. But the next part is going to show you what's happening inside the carburettor to allow this to happen. So this next three or four minutes is for the knowledge lovers. Let's take a look inside this chainsaw at its engine and carburettor. As long as the piston's moving, there's that constant airflow right through. And as this airflow passes through the restriction of the Venturi, it creates a suction pressure right up the main jet. This suction pressure draws fuel down to the end of the main jet and out into the Venturi. The main jet and the low jets work together as a whole to supply the total amount of fuel to the engine for correct engine running at idling speed. But at idling speed, there's only a certain amount of fuel that can be drawn out of the main jet because the engine, of course, isn't running as fast, creating the high flow of air coming through the carburetor, and therefore the suction pressure that draws the fuel out of the jet is much less. So this is where the importance of the low jet and its very design comes into its own. Designed for its delicateness in providing the fuel to the engine at idling speed, it's the low jets that can be adjusted to affect the quality of idling and the engine's ability to pick up revs when the throttle trigger is pulled. That's the reason why it's vital that the low revs are set correctly. Under normal working conditions, the suction pressure from the Venturi below draws the fuel down. If we turn this screw in clockwise, then its tip will protrude into the fuel way more and restrict more of the fuel entering the small reservoir. 
And it goes without saying, if there's less fuel here, then there's less fuel to go down into the Venturi for the engine's idling speed. And so what's likely happening here then, is that there's too much fuel coming out into the induction tube of the carburetor because the L screw is screwed out too far, allowing too much fuel down. And the engine is struggling to efficiently combust this amount of fuel. Okay, so now I want to talk about the chainsaw's T-screw or idling screw, which is generally there, just above the two air fuel mixture screws. In this instance, the engine revs are high and the chain's running before we press the throttle. So it's worth adjusting the third screw, labelled T-screw. So what just happened when I adjusted that exactly? Well, when the chainsaw is idling normally, the throttle plate is open just enough to allow just enough air to come through the carburetor that creates just enough suction pressure to draw out just enough fuel from the jets to maintain idling speed. And what holds the throttle plate in a certain position is this mechanism. This is the T adjustment screw for the idling. This adjustment screw is threaded through part of the carburetor and its tip contacts a small lever. And this lever is in direct contact with the throttle plate. So when adjustments are made to the T-screw and it's screwed either inwards or outwards, any movement of the T-screw moves the throttle plate. So all that was happening when the chainsaw's idling speed was too high is that the throttle plate was open a little too much. So all that was needed was a small adjustment to the T-screw to close the throttle plate slightly. OK, so don't forget to take advantage of the RepairSpecialistOnline.com website where from the landing page you can click this button here, free printable downloads, onto the download page and you can see I've got six free downloads here. The best of them are that they're printable and you can take them into your workspace with you and they're on several different topics. We have one on lawnmower ignition coil care, a checklist, the Briggs & Stratton diaphragm replacement guide, unflood your chainsaw without or with tools, how to order the correct chain every time for your chainsaw, how to tune a chainsaw guide and a chainsaw won't run. As I've said, they're absolutely free and the download buttons are in the gold. And if I just take you through the process, because I've been asked this question, how you do this. So click free, download, scroll down, add to cart, then view cart, then get my download. You can see here, it's absolutely free. There's no payment at all. So get my free download. For the phone number, you may just use any number. I don't need the phone number, but we do need an email address. Okay, so I've filled that in, my name, last name, and email address, and click. And as you can see, we're still here, I have no charge, and place order. And then we come to this screen here, thank you, and your name, and then it says download. Click download, and off it goes onto your PC. So a really big thank you for coming to the end of this video, and I hope you've gained something from it. Thank you for watching.